Hello again. Welcome back. And we're continuing to progress up Maslow's hierarchy of needs pyramid. And the second rung on that pyramid is about safety and security. Now, when Maslow originally designed that and did his research, that was really around workplace safety, you know, the ability to come back from work uh, with all your limbs intact. And I certainly don't want to be gruesome about that, but the time frame involved, safety was a much different issue. Today, as we translate that safety and security into workplace things, we're going to focus on two very unique and very, very diverse strategies to meet that need for our team members. The first of those strategies is one that is related to overall economic health and viability of the organization. Uh, security and safety in that regard is framed around, is the company going to be there tomorrow? Am I going to have security in the fact that my job is available to me? And is my employer going to be there? Is my, you know, even as blunt as, is my check going to clear? Now, as an organization, you have some ability to impact that security piece by sharing your finan financial data and some of your strategic plan information and really be transparent about a lot of those issues that can help team members understand that not only are you here today, but you're viable this month, this, this year, uh, for years to come. The other part of that viability that you can share is if your organization has a successful track record of never laying off any team members, never having a reduction in force, never having a significant uh, downsizing that occurred, share that information. I mean, literally produce a graph that shows how many team members that you started with in 1990 and every year since and show the growth and the progression in that. That type of, of information to team members becomes very secure and very uh, meaningful to them and it helps them kind of reconcile that sense of security for them. So that transparency piece and also that part about the financials become really, really valuable. Tell your people that you're doing well. Tell your people that you're making money. The second strategy related to safety and security is, you know, as I mentioned, is very divergent. And that has to do about the reasonable expectation for a team member to come into the working environment and have that working environment be free from harassment, bullying, intimidation, things like that. Uh, the very simple thing there is, first of all, to make sure that, you know, signing the harassment acknowledgement is more than just a process, but actually we highlight the fact that, and we're very proud of the fact that we have an environment that prohibits those kinds of things and we take those things extraordinarily seriously. But more than that, we have to make sure that our team members look at and see that those harassing, harassment and bullying and intimidation and hostile working environment policies actually have some teeth. Uh, and by having teeth, what I mean is that when it's a case where it occurred, and, and don't be naive, people know that it occurs, when it occurred that there was actually something that happened, that the person didn't get a slap on the wrist and, you know, based on who they know, they weren't kept in uh, employment or it wasn't whitewashed. And we need to make sure that when an event, a bullying event, an intimidation event, a harassing event occurs, that very bluntly and very plain and simply, the individual that perpetrated that when it's substantiated is no longer with the organization. and. You know what? We need to make that known to our team, too, that, you know, that type of behavior not only is not going to be tolerated, but there's significant, significant consequence. It's not about being on secret probation for, you know, long periods of time. It's actually about getting out of the organization and, and having a significant consequence associated to it. One other little side to that as well, we need to make sure that our organization, when there is a complaint from a team member about harassment or bullying or intimidation, is taking seriously. You know, we can't have an environment where, you know, somebody says, golly, Bob was harassing me or bullying me or Bob curses a lot. We can't have an environment where managers and, and leaders poo-poo that and, you know, whitewash that and say, you know what, that's just Bob being Bob. We have to take that seriously and validate that and investigate that and look into that. And that tone, when that's known in the working environment, and again, please don't be naive, it is known in the working environment, when those are taken seriously and not whitewashed or swept away or minimalized, that has a real impact on a team member's sense of their 
security and safety in the working environment. Next time that we're together, we're going to talk about the third tier in Maslow's hierarchy, and that is about social needs. And I know a lot of folks are probably going to bristle that, you know, how social needs are connected to a productive working environment, but we'll make that connection. Until next time, thank you.